Mary goes early to the tomb because she wants to observe Jewish ritual on the burial of Jesus that wasn't able to be done on Good Friday. And in times of grief, our ability to properly bury people is important for our healing. And as I think about this, I am reminded of one of the most painful elements of the pandemic that we live through is people can't bury the dead the way they want to. This week, I learned of the death of Joe Canavan, a longtime trustee of Providence College, of Barbara Cook, a PC mom. And I think about the Cook and the Canavan families having to make do with simple graveside services and how hard grieving is when you don't have the comfort of ritual. And in this time of crisis, we live in a world that's marked largely by grief. Whether we've lost a loved one, whether we can't visit a grandparent or a parent in a nursing home, whether we live with a first responder, a doctor, or a nurse, and worry every day about their health, whether we can't visit people that we care about, we can't get together for Easter. I attended a Zoom birthday party for my niece last night, my first, and we sang happy birthday. Normally, we would do that at Easter dinner today. But like every other family, our Easter rituals are disrupted. I walk across campus this morning, and I see the cars, the lone cars. And I see a mom or a dad and a student. And they're taking their stuff out. And they're grieving. We have all lost something that we cared about, even if it's only normalcy. And we live in a time of enormous grief. And grief is what we feel when we lose things that we care about. And it's normal. And it's a part of life and we have to acknowledge it. And in acknowledging our grief, that that's where we begin today. We are like Peter and Mary and the beloved disciple. They've been traumatized. And they don't have, in Mary's case, the ritual she wants. Peter not only has seen his Lord crucified, he betrayed him three times. So we all come to the tomb this morning, wherever we are, with a feeling of grief and sadness and loss. And grief can sometimes make us blind to what God is doing. And so it's not surprising that when Mary gets to the tomb, she thinks they've taken the body of Jesus. She's not able to understand what's really happening right there in front of her. And she runs, I'm, I'm struck, everybody's running everywhere in this gospel. They're feeling this emotion that's so powerful. So she run, run, run. And she goes to Peter and John, and they run, run, run. And John gets there first. Peter goes in. All he can see is what's left over 
of the burial. Because the, the thing about the empty tomb is it's empty. There is no Jesus. We don't yet have the risen Christ appearing and saying, hey, I'm alive. The empty tomb is the most ambivalent symbol of Easter. It's a vacuum into which we can make our own meaning or fail to grasp that meaning. Peter doesn't understand, not surprisingly. But John does. Gospel tells us he saw and he believed. It's not clear what he believed, but he knew something that the other two could not see, I believe, because of their grief. And the gospel invites us today to take on John's perspective, despite the grief that we feel of the losses in our own lives. The gospel invites us to believe that the empty tomb doesn't mean Jesus is missing. It means he's alive. that God has raised him from the dead. And I think it's important for us to recognize or to think about God could have done this in different ways. God could have left the crucified body of Jesus in the tomb and given him a new one, a new and improved beta version of Jesus without the wounds, without the scars, without the reminders. Or God could have brought Jesus back like a spirit of some kind. God could have raised Jesus in different ways. But what God did instead is take the crucified, spat upon, tortured body and raised it to new life. And that tells us something very important about God. There's a line that Dorothy Sayers, English writer, once wrote about God. There is no waste with God. He cancels nothing but redeems all. So the broken, battered body of Jesus, the crucified one, represents the artifact of the worst thing that human beings could ever do. And God takes it and raises it up to new and glorious life. And that is the crux of our Easter hope. That God has conquered the worst thing we can do and has transformed it into the glorious risen Christ. The symbol of God's power over sin, death, destruction, and grief. And that's what we celebrate today. And that means that whatever grief we bring with us today, in our families, in our campus community, grieving seniors who don't have what they thought they were going to have, Whatever it is that we each and as a community bring to this celebration on Sunday, none of it is worse than what they did to Jesus. And that means that what has been broken and lost in our lives 
is redeemable. That we can find some meaning, some hope, a prospect for our futures in a time of grief. The wonderful thing about the Easter season is we get about 50 days to try to figure that out. It's not going to be evident here today. At least it's not evident to me in my own life right now. But somehow in this Easter season, we all need to believe and hope and search for the meaning of the resurrection in our own lives and in our life as a campus community. The God who raised Jesus from the dead can raise us up in our individual lives and in our communal lives in ways we do not understand, in ways we can't see right now because the grief may be too raw, too difficult. We're like Mary or Peter. We can't see it yet. Today is a day for us to ask for the grace of John. In the ambiguity and the emptiness of what we witness, to see and to believe that God is acting, that God can bring a future to what seems to us to be hopelessness. This Easter is a time for us in our lives to believe, perhaps in a deeper way we've ever believed before, that the God who raised Jesus is more powerful than sin, than death, than the coronavirus, that social distancing and loneliness and pandemic, and all the things that we grieve the loss of in our lives. The God who has undone the worst that we can do can redeem what seems to us to be the remnants of disaster. Today, God invites us to believe that the God who has undone the worst in human history can undo the losses that we've experienced in our lives and can raise us up to new life. Because with God, all things are possible and nothing is unredeemable.